Hi guys, I'm Catherine Parento and today we're going to talk about how to speed up and when to speed up from the kitchen line. There are two different types on how to speed up from behind the kitchen line. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the shove. So it's the one that it's going to look like you're going to dink, but instead of dinking and being like very careful with your dink, meaning you're just kind of pushing it on the other side, you're going to accelerate close to the impact and again make it look like a dink. But instead of, make a, of dinking it, you're just gonna hit it right into your opponent's body. Uh, meaning, if I play against Athena and I know that she likes to favor her back end, then I'm gonna look to go more towards her right hip. And again, make it look like a dink, but I'm gonna surprise her and really try to make sure that she gets into that chicken wing with my offensive shove. So here, if I'm doing it here, if I show it to you, again, no backswing, I make it look like I'm dinking. Instead of dinking, I'm just gonna go flat and accelerate close to the impact and push it right into my target on the other side. Again. Sure. I'm pushing my dinks here. Pushing. Accelerate. Right, nice. That was a perfect one. That was an excellent spot. Um, so that's the shove. For the other one is the top spin out of the air. For the shove, you have to make sure it bounces in order for you to uh, hit it flat. So when it bounces, you want to make sure you hit it as it's peaking. Uh, when it comes to the, um, the top spin, it's easier to take it out of the air. So if I show you on my back end first, uh, the number one thing you're going to do is drop your paddle face below your wrist. Then you want to lock your wrist. You don't want to ju just do this shot with your wrist here. You want to make sure you use your forearm. So you again, from here, to your paddle position, drop your paddle below your wrist, and then you're gonna follow through low to high, and again, towards your target on the other side. I would like for you to go for a little bit more low to high instead of going so much flat and just go right through. Break my wrist here, and then follow through towards my target. And again, I'm trying to pick a good target on Athena's body. Here. At the end, I should be, so once you start, you drop your paddle face below your wrist, your wrist is gonna be facing you. And at the end of your motion, it should still be facing you. That means you did it correctly. A lot of the time we see people kind of just using their wrist, breaking their wrist. And now you see how my wrist is facing Athena. We don't wanna see that. We wanna make sure you keep your wrist facing you throughout your whole shot. Same thing for the forehand. If the ball is to my right, drop my paddle face, lock my wrist, use my forearm low to high. I'm really gonna brush that ball, the, the side, or I would say more, yeah, the side of the ball, low to high. And again, pick a spot on my uh, opponent's body. Here, here. And again, my now my wrist is facing Athena, so it should be staying facing her throughout the whole shot. Break my wrist, here. The minute you go here, you just lost a little bit too much control of your wrist and too much control of the ball on the other side. So when should you speed the ball up, right? Um, instead of focusing on what happens on the other side of the court, that's what we see sometimes is, you know, maybe I should speed up when my opponent's out of position. Well, what's most important is first how you feel. Do you feel like you're in a good position? Do you feel stable? Do you feel like you have time? Do you feel like your contact point's in the right spot? Do you feel like you're not moving too much? Those are scenarios where in, if you're in a good position, you wanna take that opportunity and maybe do something aggressive. The mistake that we see is maybe I'm out of position or maybe my contact point's too close to my body, but I see that Catherine's out of position and I feel pressure to take advantage of the fact that she's out of position and now I'm speeding up on a ball that I shouldn't. And so in that scenario, it doesn't really matter where I hit it because I'm not in the right position to speed up. Um, so we want, we want you guys to focus on trying to make sure that you first feel comfortable and feel like it's the right time to take that opportunity and be aggressive with your speed ups. Something else to think about, if I see my opponents really close to the kitchen line, then I know they don't have as much time to react to my speed up. So I might go a little earlier than usual, just because again, if they're standing super close to the kitchen line, it's that much more than if they were to stand here. I have to be careful if I speed it up because they have a lot more time if they stand two feet away from the kitchen line versus maybe not even one feet, you know, just being super close to the kitchen line. Again, 
that's a good time. Sometimes I just like to go early just because I want to surprise them and I know they don't have as much time to react. It might not seem like a lot, but the difference between being an inch off the kitchen line and being two feet off the kitchen line, it gives me a ton more time to react to that speed up. So although it doesn't seem like a lot, it is a lot. Here's my favorite drill on how to practice my speed ups uh, behind the kitchen line. We're both gonna start behind the kitchen line and basically we play out the point, but we start with a dink. So here I went for that one because I saw that Athena was pretty close to the kitchen line. So therefore she had less time to react to that, uh, basically my speed up from there. All right, that one I was not successful because, what do you think? How come you were able so, to read it so well on that one? Um, so we talked about kind of trying to disguise your speed up, whereas in that one, Catherine took a really big backswing, which kind of lets me know that there's a speed up that could be coming. So I took a step back and was ready uh, to counter the ball that she was gonna be aggressive on. I also felt like on this, um, on this specific speed up, I went for maybe 100 miles per hour. I'm exaggerating, but I went really hard. And a lot of the time, I feel like we see that a lot when we teach around the country or we see amateur players playing in tournaments. They try to finish the point off of their first speed up. Um, the goal is to think in about a combo. Think about a combo, one, two. Your goal is to make your opponent feel uncomfortable so you can finish on the second ball. So again, I'm trying to make Athena chicken wing or I want her to react kind of funny to my ball so I get the second ball to kill it to just put it away so let's try that one that was perfect right perfect perfect not just kidding um, but there I got her again where I want it I, I aimed for her right hip I made sure that I didn't give her too much pace the ball came back as a pop-up and I was able to finish with two hands. I hope you guys enjoyed my video on how and when to speed up from the kitchen line. If you like the content like this, please make sure you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and make sure you comment if you have any questions. Hunter and I'm gonna finish on the second and I'm gonna explain what happened. Okay, but don't hit me. No, <laughs> I'll try not to. Uh... Was I supposed to speed up? I was, I was late. <laughs> you didn't expect it. Bloopers. <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely going out. I shouldn't have hit it.